<laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Agar. Uh, I'd like to just uh, relate a little bit of history of SAPAC here. I think it was uh, 2008, uh, maybe 2009, it's been so long that I don't remember the exact dates. When Munawar uh, and I, after long discussions with Munawar, we thought we'll create a PAC called a Sindhi American uh, Political Action Committee in DC. And this was a time when even uh, the greatest uh, defenders of Sindh in America thought this was a bad idea. They thought that nobody knew what sin was. They thought that the American government, the American Congress, the American representatives would not care about Sindh or Sindhis. And they thought that we were all wasting our time. We still went ahead and did it. And then we, I remember it was 2009, I'm sorry, about, I think 2009 when we had our inaugural uh, session, our dinner for SAPAC. And we were looking around for some uh, politician, congressman, anybody of any standing stature who would respond to our invitations. And I, we could have, I think, uh, that must have been our luckiest day as uh, representatives of SAPAC because a congressman from California, who I don't know if he even knew what sin was at that time, he did, okay, uh, you know, responded and uh, agreed to attend our first session. And I will remember this for the rest of my life. He came in maybe a little late in the session, but he sat there until the last attendee had left. He listened to everybody. He was the, he, the most receptive of congressmen or politicians that I've ever had the honor and pleasure of knowing. And since then, in the last five years, he has done more for Sindh than most of Sindhis who were born Sindhis and would have lived a life of 100 years. So if I could give a honorary citizenship of Sindhi to a person on the planet of this earth, this, uh, 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 that would be Congress Brad Sherman. And it is my immense honor and pleasure to introduce Congress, uh, Brad, Congressman Brad Sherman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Brad Sherman from California's best name city, Sherman Oaks. It's a pleasure to be with you uh, again, as I have been at each one of the dinners of this organization. Professor, I listened to your comments uh, carefully. It is interesting that a court would reject DNA evidence because it is not mentioned in Sharia. Uh, fingerprint evidence is also not mentioned anywhere in the Quran. But fingerprint evidence is chiefly used to convict people who have committed violence against men and killed them or stolen their property. DNA evidence is not mentioned in the Quran and its single greatest use is to convict men for crimes of violence against women. Suddenly one type of evidence not mentioned in the Quran has been accepted for 50 years the other, a newer form of evidence available chiefly to protect women is somehow anti-Islamic. Um, I don't think that uh, that the true uh, the, the true for uh, you know the, the the prophet and those around him would have, would sit here quietly and to see um, the Quran abused for such ends. Um, with me here are two of my aides, Siamak Kurdistani, who is my advisor on foreign policy. Siamak, stand up. Siamak himself is from a ethnic and religious minority in the Southwest Asia area, so he has some identification with those of you from Sindh. Also with me is Eric Schultz. Come, Eric. What am, I, what am I saying? Mark. Your predecessor was Eric. 
Uh, Mark has recently joined me as my advisor on economic issues. And uh, if you can just give either one of these staffers your card, I will stay uh, in touch with you and keep you up to date, although I know that uh, Sufi does an outstanding job of that. Should begin by saying uh, Cindy Harun K. Salam Ayin ba Bali Kar. Um, I want to thank Sufi for everything he's done to, uh, to, to promote Sindh and the U.S. relationship with the people of Sindh. And uh, in recent years, he's been joined by his wife, Atama. What an outstanding team. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a senior member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. And uh, I uh, join with colleagues in founding the Sindh Caucus, which now includes uh, Congressman uh, Tom Petrie, who wishes he was here, Carolyn Maloney, who was here, and uh, Adam Schiff, who will be here electronically, and, uh, uh, and Representative John Lewis, uh, the conscience of the United States uh, uh, Congress. Uh, I've had a close relationship with the people of Sindh since before I was born. Since 1951, uh, my grandfather uh, wa was there working for the United Nations International Labor Commission. He was a specialist in technical education. He s it talked often of the time he spent uh, in Sindh as my grandmother uh, spoke of it often as well, uh, and uh, just as he has helped pr the people of Sindh provide information uh, uh, with technical education, uh, Sufi and this organization, the Sindhi PAC, uh, has uh, provided me with an education on uh, the people of Sindh and uh, their uh, natural uh, respect for the values that make America great, um, due in part to uh, a moderate and Sufi-influenced uh, Islam. Sorry about that. Oh, that's fine. Your microphone is faulty one. OK. Uh, I assume I don't need to start over. <laughs> Check this one, please. Pakistan is uh, perhaps the uh, most uh, difficult uh, diplomatic and national security problem. <laughs> it is so close to everything we're concerned about, whether it be Afghanistan, our relations with uh, the Islamic world, and uh, those few who have uh, perverted Islam for their own, uh, for their own purposes. Uh, it is uh, the only unstable nuclear state and uh, a country that I, uh, with which we maintain a, uh, a frenemy kind of relationship. Um, for the past few years, uh, I have been urging our government, the Congress, and especially the administration to reach out to the Sindhi people a people that have been marginalized uh, by their own government, uh, and to reach out in the Sindhi language and with respect for Sindhi culture. If we buy in to the views of a few in Islamabad who believe that uh, Pakistan will soon be some homogenous state uh, with everybody speaking Urdu, we will misunderstand Pakistan. We will not develop a relationship with the Pakistani people, and we will certainly not develop a relationship with the people of the southern third of Pakistan in Sindh. Um, we must uh, join with the Sindhis in opposing I the effort to glorify extremism and violence in Pakistan and all the things the professor was talking about before me. Uh, and we can best do that by reaching out to the people of Sindh, not thinking that the only people we can talk to 
are those in the government in Islamabad. Just last week, Congressman Dana Rohrbacher and I introduced an amendment to the Defense Authorization Act. And I want to bring that to your attention, although many of you know about it. Keep in mind the vast majority of our extremely large amount of aid to Islamabad goes through the defense bill, almost $2 billion a year. And it goes through the um, coalition support funds program. And we provided a requirement on that program before further uh, funds are dispersed. And that is that the president must analyze the situation and disperse the funds only if he can certify that Pakistan is not using any of our military aid, any of our funds, any of our equipment to persecute minority groups for their uh, legitimate and nonviolent political and, re and, and religious involvement. And that this specifically needs to include the, the Baluch uh, as well as the Sindhis, uh, the Hazara, and other uh, minority religious and ethnic groups including the Christians, Hindus, and Ahmadiyyas. The amendment uh, was passed as part of a group of amendments unanimously by the House of Representatives. It is part of the bill that we sent to the Senate. Uh, you may have seen uh, its coverage in the Hindustan Times and a number of other South Asian publications. And I think the message will get through to Islamabad that the people of America don't want to see our aid used to persecute the ethnic and religious minorities of Pakistan. Um, a number of us, including Carolyn Maloney, who was here, and Tom Petrie, uh, the Republican from Wisconsin, have sent a letter uh, to the uh, relevant appropriations subcommittee uh, calling for them to embrace the strongest possible language that $1.5 million be spent by the Voice of America to broadcast in the Sindhi language. Now we are, we've got some opposition from inside the administration. People who say, oh, we can be more popular with the powers that be in Islamabad if we em embrace their view that everybody in Pakistan speaks Urdu. And in fact, the administration got back to us and said, oh, we can just reach out to the people of Pakistan and Urdu we're told by the Pakistani government everybody understands Urdu. Or at least the fact is many in rural Sindh can say a few phrases of Urdu. But that's not how you reach out to them and convince them of the beneficence and uh, of the United States. Uh, you know, I speak a few phrases of Spanish, a few phrases of Italian, but if you were going to try to sell me a car, or an ideology, uh, best you do it in English. Um, you saw me earlier in this speech demonstrate that I know uh, at least one phrase of Sindhi, yet none of you would argue that uh, a Sindhi language radio station is the best way to persuade Mark or myself of any particular ideology. Um, we don't have to, uh, to listen to Islamabad because we can instead look at what happens on the ground in the Sindh province. 30 radio stations are broadcasting in Sindhi supported by literally tens of thousands of advertisers who do business in Sindh. They know how to get a message across. I'm afraid uh, there are some at the Voice of America who don't. And we will be pressing them because just this week, this coming week, the full committee is going to meet for hearings on the Voice of America and our, and, the, and our broadcasting program. And I am going to again and again bring up the fact that, at my, uh, uh, that, that my amendment was passed overwhelmingly by the committee to say we should be broadcasting in SIND and spending again that one and a half million dollars a year uh, to do so. To think that we could reach tens of millions of people by spending a billion and a half dollars, and yet, due to the political pressure, this idea that you're going to win a popularity contest 
at an ISI party, um, that's, uh, that's not where we should be trying to win the popularity contest. It should be to be popular with all of the peoples of Pakistan. Um, I was just on the phone with uh, the State Department uh, yesterday to press them not only on this issue, because I want a clear answer from our embassy in Islamabad as to where they stand on broadcasting in the Sin language, uh, but I'm also pressing them to reach out in the Sin language by web, uh, website, and Facebook. I'm told that we have some things up on the web in Sindhi. We have a few things on our Facebook page. Um, it's surprising to learn that the Facebook page is far more, uh, draws far more interest in Pakistan uh, than, uh, than does our website. But we can't just put up a few press releases. Everything we're trying to communicate to the people of Pakistan should be in Urdu, yes, and in Punjabi, yes, and in Sindhi, and maybe Baluchi as well. So, um, uh, and they are doing a reasonably good job in Pashto. So, um, uh, whether you're trying to sell uh, something in an ideology in Pakistan, or you're trying to sell cars in Los Angeles, you reach people in the language that they're most comfortable with, not the one that the government tells you is most politically correct. That's why 30 radio stations are able to support themselves on Sindhi language advertising. Um, now the Karachi Council, uh, our, our State Department has done some good things, in part because of the pressure of your organization and the Sindhi Caucus in Congress. The Karachi Consulate's senior media advisor is a native Sindhi speaker, and uh, it is his job to reach out to the people of Sindh. Um, now, in addition to that, the Air Ambassador has toured Sindh on more than one occasion, and I think is finally opening up to the importance of that region. Uh, the State Department is doing a better job of focusing on economic uh, uh, development, health, culture, and media activities in Sindh. Ambassador Olson's two-day visit to Northern Sindh uh, included, um, and this was just a few months ago, uh, he met with uh, student activists, civil society, business, uh, the media, political leaders. Uh, he toured uh, the city of uh, Jokababad and the city of uh, Sukur. Uh, I hope that you will not uh, evaluate my understanding of these issues by, by my pronunciation capacity. I hope my, uh, my technical understanding exceeds my enunciation. Um, but I will continue to try. Um, uh, the Ambassador uh, Olson was uh, uh, joined uh, uh, by a key uh, official of USAID and joined by the SIN Minister of Health and the SIN Minister of Rehabilitation. The ambassador spoke at the groundbreaking ceremony uh, to officially initiate construction of uh, the Jacobat uh, Institute of Medical Science, which is a state-of-the-art hospital. The United States is providing $10 million uh, for that facility. Um, and uh, this will expand access to quality health care uh, for uh, the residents of not only Jacobad but uh, people uh, in neighboring areas as well. The ambassador also visited uh, uh, Zaraza uh, to pay respects at the shrine of the Sufi poet uh, Sa Chul Sarmast. Um, As you know, that poet uh, died in 1829 after 90 years of life, and the ambassador uh, met with uh, Cindy journalists and television. Um, last year, the State Department uh, offered an international visitor leadership program to Cindy uh, speaking journalists. This marks the first time that any State Department exchange program has been offered in Cindy. 
The program that program annually brings to the United States journalists from all over the world uh, to meet and confer with professional counterparts here in the United States. And due to the work of the people in this room, our caucus and this PAC, we've finally been able to put SIND on the State Department's map. In December, uh, a number of us, including uh, uh, now former Congressman Robert Dole, and I spearheaded an effort. We got 15 members of Congress to join us to urge uh, that the Secretary of State Clinton push for greater rights and protections for religious minorities in Pakistan. A number of us are outraged at the treatment of uh, young Hindu girls uh, in various parts of Pakistan including unfortunately SIN. Um, as a senior ma member of the Foreign Affairs Committee and an active member of the International Religious Freedom Caucus, I believe that we have to fight to protect the ethnic and religious minorities of Pakistan. Uh, so, um, in conclusion, we've done a lot since this uh, since our caucus was formed in January of 2011. You have done a lot since this PAC was formed just a few years ago. I look forward to building on our friendship. I want to thank a lot of people in this room for the fact I'm standing here. Not just those of you who invited me to a free dinner, but those of you who made sure that I could stand here as a re-elected member of Congress. Uh, As it happened, I was up a, in a race against a very capable man who had served 30 years in Congress. And uh, I'm now committed to serving another 30 years in Congress uh, because of, uh, of the electoral success we had there. And I couldn't have done it uh, without uh, some, some people in this room uh, who helped me out, who gave me advice, who gave me financial resources. So I look forward on building on my friendship with, with, uh, with you and building upon the friendship between the American people and the Sindhi people. As uh, GM Syed uh, said uh, a couple, few decades ago, uh, we have been Sindhis for 5,000 years, Muslims for 500 years, and at that time Pakistanis for 40 years. We need to be able to reach out to the people of Sindh with that kind of understanding. That this is a truly ancient civilization um, that has had its own culture, its own language, its own approach to Islam for hundreds and hundreds of years. And those who think that we can reach all of Pakistan uh, by going to parties with ISI officials in Islamabad do not understand Sindh and do not understand the other parts of Pakistan as well. So, um, as many have said, Jiyeh uh, 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 Sindh. Thank you very much. <laughs>